So here in our first code sample, we have the idea of the overloaded constructor. So you'll remember that a constructor is what we need to be able to essentially get up and running an instance of a class, so an object of a given class. And the reason we do this is because when we call to the constructor, we're actually able to use the members of that class without first having to initialize them in line with the code because we've already done so, hopefully, via the constructor call. So here we have an inventory item. It is the same we referenced in the, um, the text material video, but I thought it was worth looking at in live code. So here, um, this is the header file. So this is inventory item.h. That's really what we want to be looking at first. Um, and the thing to notice here is under our public member functions for our inventory class, we have inventory item. So remember that the constructor for the class shares its class name. So if we have an inventory item, we would have an inventory item and then parens, that would be our constructor. And the idea here is that we actually have three different constructors. We have our empty default constructor that is right here starting on line 15. You'll notice that the parens are in fact empty. Um, and what we do is we initialize the data therein to be zeros and an empty string. But we might create instances of this object where we have a description that is available to us. So this would be our second constructor. You'll notice here that as far as parameters go, we have one. It is a string for the description. But maybe we want to go another step farther yet than that is. And we've actually got here on line number 31 is the start of our third constructor. Here we're saying, let's get the job fully done. So when we initialize, when we instantiate, when we create this, well, whichever um, version of the inventory item object that we create, we're going to get a description, we're going to get a C for cost, we're going to get a U for how many units, and then we will have the complete description for an inventory item object. So how does this look when we actually have the you know, uh, the runtime that we're worried about doing this. So there's a couple of things here to take notice of. Um, first and foremost, we are going to call, or we are going to use rather, all three of those constructors. So we're gonna call them here. Um, and the, the mechanism used to be able to call the proper constructor is actually the number of arguments that we're passing to it. So here on line number eight, the default constructor is called because we pass to it no arguments. Here on line number 14, constructor number two is called. The reason it's called is because we're passing to it one argument and that is a string argument. Just to follow all the way through, when we call here inventory item number three, when we create this object, we are calling to constructor number three. And the reason we know we're doing that is because we have a string, a double, and an int. So if I was just to run these, you can tell here that all three of these function just as well. Um, and the reason for that is that we have uh, called to the proper constructor uh, and we have provided all of the necessary data. So you'll notice here that um, following the call to our first empty default constructor, we actually have to provide values. And remember again that the way we do that is by calling the sets for our class. The way we do that is with the dot nomenclature. So dot set description, dot set cost, and dot set units. 
the same is true on the other side of this. Um, when we're actually doing the print, we are doing that with the dot get member functions. So dot get cost, dot get units, and dot get descriptions. And then again, you'll notice um, that the um, the the very last thing rather to notice is for item number two, where we called to our single um, parameter. Uh, constructor, you'll notice that the price and units available, or the cost rather, and units available are set to zero because we did not do anything to assign a new value to that. So these are available and ready to rock just as soon as we go ahead and create that object. So that is the benefit of the overloaded constructor.